Now, I know that uh, we are in the middle of our 14th Amendment lessons, okay? But as I'm reading up on them, I'm finding so many things that I forgot that I was taught in school, okay? So today, I think that we are going to take a minute and discuss how the Supreme Court of the United States said that black people we're not citizens. Yeah, that's what we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, on Monday, we are going to go back to talking about the 14th Amendment, and we're going to talk about the cases that are currently covered under the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment. We're going to start with the rights to contraceptives. But right now, let's talk about the Dred Scott case, okay? Dred Scott was born into slavery around 1799 in Virginia. Okay? In 1818, he moved with Peter Blow, his enslaver, to Alabama, and then they moved to St. Louis, Missouri. Okay? Now, Virginia, Alabama, and Missouri were all slave states. Okay? Now, after Peter Blow died, an army surgeon, Dr. John Emerson, purchased Dred Scott and took him to Illinois, which was a free state, and then to Fort Snelling in Wisconsin Territory, where slavery was outlawed. Okay, now I'm going to task you with looking up the Missouri Compromise. Okay. Now, Dred Scott meets and marries a lovely woman by the name of Harriet Robinson, who was also enslaved. Okay? Now, her enslaver transfers ownership to Dr. John Emerson. So now, Dr. Emerson has enslaved Dred Scott and his wife, Harriet. And the nonchalant way in which I'm speaking of people as though they are property sickens my soul because I am filled with rage. Let's continue. Okay. Now, time passes. Okay. Uh, Dr. Emerson, uh, he moves to Louisiana, which is obviously a slave state, okay? He meets and marries a heifer mm -hmm, named Eliza, yeah. Now, this is important because when Dr. Emerson dies, okay, the people he has enslaved, they pass on to his widow, okay? Now, uh, Dred Scott tries to purchase his freedom, his freedom and his wife's freedom, as well as their daughter's freedom from the widow. Okay? The widow refuses repeatedly. She hires them out. Okay? Now, we are going to have a conversation on the book, They Were Her Property, where we learn that um, white women were active participants in the slave trade, okay? Because their wealth came from selling black bodies. And Dr. Emerson's widow was no different. She knew where her wealth came from. So she refused to let Dred Scott purchase his freedom, his wife's freedom, and their children's freedom. So Dred Scott and his wife sue for their freedom. And they sue based on two statutes, okay? The first one is solely based on the fact that they are allowed. One statute allows any person of color to sue for wrongful enslavement, okay? And the other statute states that any person taken to a free territory automatically became free and could not be re-enslaved upon returning to a slave state, okay? Now remember, Wisconsin Territory and Illinois 
were free states, okay? So even though they were taken back to Louisiana, they could not be re-enslaved, okay? Now, the case makes its way up to the United Supreme, the United States Supreme Court, okay? And the United States Supreme Court decides against Dred Scott and his wife. So it was Chief Justice Roger Taney who um, wrote the decision. And if I was reading between the lines correctly, um, nobody understood how he got the job. Yeah, yeah. So there's that. Okay. But uh, he said that all people of African descent, free or enslaved, were not United States citizens and therefore had no right to sue in federal court. In addition, he wrote that the Fifth Amendment protected slave owners' rights because enslaved workers were their legal property. So he said that slaves were property and could not be removed from the enslaver without due process. Okay. In one decision, he said that black people who were brought here against their will were not citizens of a nation that they built. He said that black people who were born into slavery to live a life building a country in which they would never be free. He said that they were not citizens. And he said that black people were not human, but that black people were property. Now, don't worry. Dred Scott and his wife and their daughters, they did find freedom. Dr. Emerson's widow, she remarried a New York politician who was also an abolitionist, okay? And he was horrified, shocked, I tell you, to find out that his wife uh, had enslaved the infamous Dred Scott. So being the true abolitionist that he was, he sold Dred Scott and his family to a to the previous owner. So you remember the owner at the beginning of this story? Yeah, Dred Scott was sold back to that family and it was that family that freed Dred Scott and Dred Scott's family. But unfortunately, Dred Scott was only able to experience that freedom for a year. He passed away a year after his emancipation from tuber tuberculosis. Now, the decision in the Dred Scott case was supposed to settle the issue, the debate, uh, on slavery between the North and the South, but it really didn't do that. Um, instead, the divide between North and South grew, and it culminated in the secession of the Southern states from the Union. And of course, we all know that led to the creation of the Confederate States of America, and ultimately it led to the Civil War, right? Um, and, you know, at the end of the Civil War, we've got the Emanci Emancipation Proclamation, right, that freed the enslaved people living in the Confederacy, right? But it would be another year before Congress passed the 13th Amendment abolishing slavery.